Hey, so now we're going to talk about the sort of last property which we're going to talk about in depth, which is about efficiency of estimators. So what does an efficiency of an estimator mean? Well, I think it's probably best illustrated by an example. So again, if we had our sort of frequency distribution of um, a given estimator, so let's say that it was an unbiased estimator, so it was centered around the true population parameter. So in other words, the expectation of our estimator, call it beta hat, is equal to the population parameter. So that's one estimator. But let's say that we have another estimator which uses exactly the same sort of sample size, and yet it actually outputs a range of values for beta and or ranges of estimates of beta and p which are closer to the population parameter. So let's call this estimator beta tilde. So in this context we would say that beta tilde is more efficient than beta hat. And not only is it more efficient, it is also more efficient and it is also unbiased. So we would definitely prefer beta tilde to beta hat in this context, because if we were to apply beta tilde to a given sample, there's a higher probability that we would get a value of the population parameter, which was closer to the actual population parameter, or we would get an estimate of the population parameter, which was closer to the true population parameter. However, it is possible that often things aren't quite as rosy when we're comparing estimators. So it's often the case that although a given estimator might be more efficient than, let's say, beta hat, it might actually be, or it might actually have a slight degree of bias. So it might actually end up being, even though it's slightly more efficient, so there's a sort of smaller range of values which it will likely output, it might be um, slightly biased. So, so in general, that means that we need to sort of look at the trade-off between efficiency and unbiasedness, or efficiency and consistency.